Factory drag cars have a mystique like none other in the automotive world because they had really crazy engine packages, lightweight body panels, super weird and crazy options, and of course they were very rare, which makes them extremely valuable today. And I had the chance to take a look at the factory drag cars exhibit at the Savoy Automobile Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. I think you guys are gonna enjoy taking a walk through this crazy collection of extremely rare factory produced drag cars. Let's kick it off with the 1964 Ford Fairlane that everybody calls the Thunderbolt. Now this package was extreme for Ford. It was definitely the most outrageous combination they'd ever put together because they took their mid-size platform, the Ford Fairlane, which was a unibody car, and they put their biggest engine in it. And to accomplish this, they actually sent these cars out to Dearborn Steel Tubing Company to have this conversion completed. So they had to modify the shock towers, they had to build new exhaust manifold headers, basically. They had to do a lot of special stuff to make that 427 fit into the smaller platform. This was a special race-prepared engine. It had a high-rise intake manifold, it had two four-barrel carburetors on it, and a very special cast aluminum air cleaner that had these big dryer vent looking tubes that went to the inboard headlights. But underneath all of that is a very potent engine. Very special components in addition to that 427 are the fiberglass front fenders, the fiberglass hood that has a teardrop scoop, and it had to have a scoop because the intake carburetor and air cleaner combination was much taller than stock and it would not clear a stock hood. So the teardrop scoop kind of gave these cars a special identity. And then there was a lot of other lightweight components, the bumpers, and some cars had a combination of aluminum and steel. Some cars had fiberglass. It was just a matter of where they landed on that production cycle and what Dearborn Steel Tubing Company used to put the car together because basically every one of them was a little bit different. Dearborn Steel Tubing Company built 100 examples of the Thunderbolt car. They built 51 automatics and 49 four-speed cars. And these cars obviously are very expensive today. They're very valuable because they're so rare and a lot of them got tore up in the drag racing days. So definitely less than 100 of these cars exist. And this particular one belongs to Steve Honnell and he's based out of Middle Tennessee. He raced this car in Alabama. Because Superstock Racing was at such a crazy pace during this time, Steve actually ended up selling this car when he got his hands on a factory produced Mercury Comet drag car, which we'll look at in a minute. But he sold this car and basically lost track of it. And then it resurfaced many, many years later in Floyd Garrett's Muscle Car Museum in Sevierville, Tennessee. The car was completely restored and it ended up in Reggie Jackson's collection for a short time. Steve then confirmed that Reggie Jackson's car was in fact his old race car and he made a deal to buy the car back. So this car went back to its original owner and that's an extremely rare situation for any factory produced drag car, but especially rare with these Ford Thunderbolts. These cars were ordered completely stripped down, no accessories whatsoever. The factory glass was removed and replaced with plexiglass. And then of course the seats were removed and replaced with very small bucket seats. So, you know, basically these cars were as stripped down as you could be with the biggest engine you could have. So 3,200 pounds, 425 horsepower rating, and these cars were absolutely the top dogs on the drag strip. In fact, the very first race of the year, the NHRA Winter Nationals, there was two Thunderbolts in the finals. Now, it wasn't this Thunderbolt, but still, these cars were potent, they were fast, they looked cool, and they're iconic pieces of Ford racing history. Sticking with the Ford camp, we're going to a 1964 Ford Galaxy 500 lightweight. Now, it is unusual that Ford would produce two factory drag cars in the same year with completely different platforms. So the Ford Thunderbolt was based on that Fairlane, which was a mid-sized car with the big engine, and they had to do a lot of modifications just to make it all work. But the Galaxy was a known combination that had already been very potent in the 1963 season, so the 64 was kind of a continuation of that, but the real purpose behind the Galaxy was a plan B. So the idea of the Thunderbolt was revolutionary, and Ford was a little bit concerned that they might get to the first race of the year and get completely disqualified and run off from the drag strip. So they built these Galaxies as a backup plan. If the Thunderbolt got ran off from the drag strip, they'd have a factory backed option. So the 64 Galaxy lightweight had the same engine combination. This was an R-Code 427, 
425 horsepower. It had the high rise intake manifold. It had the two four barrel carburetors. It had a cast aluminum air cleaner, just like the Thunderbolt, except some of these galaxies like this one had a special air cleaner with molded ducts instead of the wire duct like what you'd see on all the Thunderbolts. So this is a really rare combination. Just a handful of them exist. You'll also notice this car has an aluminum radiator in it, which typically is a red flag for an old restoration like this, that somebody has gone in and added some modern aftermarket pieces. But the reality is that you could get an aluminum radiator for these Ford lightweight cars. They're extremely rare, they're extremely hard to find, but given the fact that this car is owned by Larry Davis, who is a drag racing historian, a super stock expert, a factory drag car expert, I doubt he would put some kind of cheesy aftermarket piece on this car because this car is largely original. It has been mechanically restored to be functional, but for the most part, this car has a lot of original pieces on it. So we'll see that the paint job, it's got some age on it. You can see the cracking of the paint. The lettering has got a little bit of age on it, but you'll also see that this car ran without this lettering on it back in the day. There's not very many pictures of it, but this car ran in the Ohio area and it competed in 1966, 67, and 68 at the U.S. Nationals. So this car's got some pretty neat history. It's very well preserved. It's not over restored in any way. And this car is obviously very valuable because only 50 of these cars were made. 25 four-speed cars, which this one is a four-speed, and 25 automatic cars. Even though these cars are called a lightweight, they don't have the extensive lightweight parts that like the 63 and a half Ford Galaxy or the Thunderbolt, they don't have all of those pieces. Basically the only lightweight component is the fiberglass hood, which it has the same teardrop scoop as the Thunderbolt. It has a cool look to it, but the main point here is saving a little bit of weight on the front of the car. And also part of that lightweight package is they move the battery to the trunk for better weight balance. And then of course these cars were ordered completely stripped down. They didn't have any kind of sound deadener, seam sealer, you know, they didn't have any kind of accessories like a heater or a radio or even a clock. They were very stripped down cars and they were all ordered with white paint, red interior. You'll see they've got lightweight bucket seats, no console or anything like that. These are just stripped down cars, basically as simple as you could make it to put the weight where it needed to be. So even though these cars still weighed 3,700 plus pounds, they were much lighter than they would have been if they were a fully optioned out Galaxy 500. You'll notice on the grill that some of the teeth have been removed to allow better airflow into those big air ducts. And then there's some other special things about these lightweight cars. They had an aluminum bell housing and out back these cars had a 471 gear if they were equipped with an automatic transmission or in this case, they had a 457 rear gear ratio with the four speed transmission. So these things were race ready. They were tuned, they were ready to hit the quarter mile. And then this is a pretty nice touch here. This window sticker for this car is pretty substantial. So you'll see Galaxy 500 two door hardtop, Wimbledon white, four speed transmission, dragster conversion package with four speed transmission. That was a pretty expensive deal. 427, 8V, that means two fours, high performance, and look at this, sold to Ford Motor Company, General Office, shipped to Holman and Moody in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now this is amazing right here. These cars have so much history because they had so many great people touching them. Holman and Moody obviously is legendary in the Ford camp and to have one of these cars that Holman and Moody put their hands on is a pretty big deal. So you can see this car is pretty much unrestored. It does have some late model pieces on it like the tires and wheels are not exactly appropriate for it, but they have the vintage look. But overall, this car is very authentic. This is another really great piece of Ford racing history. So there are some notable years in the factory drag car landscape. 1963 was a peak for General Motors. And then I guess some could say 1964 was a peak for Ford because of the Thunderbolt but Ford continued to build factory drag cars well into the late 60s. Mercury built 60 of these 427 Comets and they did it with four different body styles. They had the 202, which was the base model two-door post, the Capri, the Caliente, and then the top line, which was the Cyclone. So 60 cars between those four different models, just a handful of these things still exist. This Mercury Comet Cyclone is another piece of the Steve Honnell legacy. 
And this car's got some pretty serious racing history. And you can see on the outside here, this car has been reworked. It has some late model components. It's got sort of like some weld wheel copy wheels on there. It's got modern tires on it. You can see that the lettering isn't exactly old school, but this thing's got the history. It's documented, it is the real deal. They were available with two different 427s. They had the R code, which is what this car has, two fours, 425 horse, and they were also available with the W code, which was a single four barrel, 410 horsepower. It's got a four speed transmission in it. You can see when we look in the interior, there's an old newspaper here that's got a picture of the car of course, it's got steel wheels on it, just like most of them did back in the day. And it's got a nice little blurb about this particular car and how they're gunning for a world championship. And you'll also see a Phoenix Dragway jacket in the back of this thing. This car's got a lot of good pieces on it. And the fact that this thing is still in the hands of its original owner, that's a big deal. Now we're moving into the General Motors category and we're gonna start with the Swiss Cheese Pontiac. Now this is a 1963 Pontiac Catalina. And if you missed it, I did a full video on this particular car showing the full history of it. This is the most famous 63 Swiss cheese car of all because it was driven by Arnie Beswick. He is a legendary Pontiac drag racer. And of course, this car was a big time winner in 1963. And it continued to win through several different other owners through the years, but it's now in a private collection in South Georgia. But what made these cars so special is the Swiss cheese frame. And they got that name because there was over a hundred holes drilled in the frame to lighten this car. Because these cars were full frame, full size cars, and they were doing anything they could to lighten them up. So they drilled all those holes. They put aluminum fenders, aluminum hood, other aluminum small pieces like the bumpers and brackets and things like that. And then of course, the 421 cubic inch super duty engine. These things had big compression, big cam, two four barrel carburetors and some of them even had aluminum exhaust manifolds to cut weight. A lot of those got replaced because those manifolds just didn't last a long time. But these cars were very significant, very special pieces even back in the day. These things were highly regarded. They won a lot of races. And the unfortunate part, with only 14 of them being built, there's just not very many of them left. Who knows where some of these parts and pieces ended up? But this one is pretty much all original. You can see it does have a roll bar in it, which is not original, and it does have some bigger wheels and tires on the back than what it would have normally had from back in the day. But still, this car has the right look. It has the right parts and pieces. And of course, it has beautiful hand lettering that replicates that original setup that Arnie Beswick ran in 1963. Another one that I covered in depth is this Z11 Impala. Now this is 1963 only. 50 of them were produced, and they had a very special engine. These were 409 based, but they actually came in at 427 cubic inches. They had a slightly longer stroke, they had different cylinder heads, they had a different camshaft, a two-piece intake manifold, two four-barrel carburetors, this cowl induction air cleaner. I mean, they had tons of exotic parts and pieces. And these cars, again, extremely rare, extremely valuable. Only 50 of them were built and just a handful of them still exist. And this particular car is built as a faithful tribute to Wally Bell's New York Shaker, which as I revealed in the previous video, this thing had a huge history, even before it ended up in New York with Wally Bell. This car was run under several different owners in several different states, many of which were legendary super stock racers. So this car, even though it's not legit as far as the actual New York Shaker. It does have legit Z11 parts. It's got aluminum fenders, aluminum hood. It's got a real 427 in there. You know, this is as real as it gets, put together with authentic parts and replicating one of the most famous Z11 cars out there. So if you haven't checked out that video that goes really in the weeds to tell the story on this car, you should go check it out when you get done watching this video. We got one important note here. In 1963, General Motors pulled out of the factory racing program. They completely stopped it. So with only 50 Z11 cars and only 14 Swiss cheese Pontiacs, you know, there was nothing in 64. They still made the 409, they still made some cool stuff, but they didn't have those very special factory race cars. But a very significant thing happened in 1965, which put Chevrolet back in the running for lots of performance situations, whether it was round track racing 
or drag racing or street racing or any kind of racing, Chevrolet was back in the game in 1965 with the introduction of the big block that we all know and love today. So that 396 cubic inch big block, that had actually been in development and they put it into their mid-size sedan, the Chevrolet Chevelle. Now these cars were not necessarily lightweight. This was not built to be some sort of drag car straight out of the factory, but it was a very special combination because it took their biggest engine combination and put it into what was their lightest practical car. Of course, they did have the Corvair, they had the Chevy 2, but putting a big block in there didn't make sense. They could put a big block in the Chevelle platform without doing any real cutting. So the 65 Chevelle with the big block, that's called a Z16. And that is an extremely rare package. 201 of them were built. Out of those 201 cars, only 72 have been documented today. So there's still some out there floating around somewhere, but a lot of these cars got took apart or they got parted out or scrapped or whatever. But 72 of these things still exist. This is one of them. And it is a beautifully restored car. You'll see that it is not in drag race form. This is a bone stock restored muscle car. It's got the factory hubcaps, it's got the gold stripe tires, it's got all of its factory components, date codes, all the right stuff to make this thing as authentic as possible. And this car set the stage for what would be a very popular run of Super Sport Malibus and Chevelles from 1965 all the way through the 70s. So this Malibu Super Sport Z16 package led to the SS396 from 66 and 67, and then on up into the 427s and the Copos, and this led to a lot of really great Chevelles. Even though that Z16 gets a lot of the credit for really kicking off the big block in Chevrolet's muscle car world, the car sitting next to it in this exhibit is even more special and even more rare. That's because it's a one of one, and it was a special order car. This is legitimately a Copo car from 1965. 65 Chevelle 300, which is the bare bones. It's the lowest, cheapest car you could get. And it's a two-door sedan, meaning it's got that post, the B pillars, and it has Chevrolet's 396 cubic inch big block in it. It's backed by four speed. This is the ultimate hot rod. It is the lightest weight mid-size car you could get. It's stripped down to nothing. It's black, it's got red interior. It's got all the right hot rod pieces and it's the only one of its kind. It's the only one ever produced in this configuration. So extremely rare and it's sitting next to one of Chevrolet's most rare and coveted muscle cars, but it's the top of the food chain when it comes to rarity and probably value. I'm sure that this thing just has an untouchable number attached to it, but it's on display here. It is magnificently restored. I mean, the black paint on this car is flawless. This car has the right look for this crazy hot rod combination from 1965. All right, it's time to get into the Mopars because Dodge and Plymouth had a very special part in the factory drag car wars of the early to mid 1960s. And even into the late 60s, they continued to produce very special, high horsepower, lightweight cars. And we're gonna to touch on two of the most significant packages right here. So the first we're gonna look at is a 1965 Plymouth Belvedere. And this is the A990 package. That means that this was a mid-size sedan, the Belvedere sedan. It had a 426 cubic inch Hemi. These things are extremely valuable, extremely rare. 101 of these Plymouth Belvedere's were built and a similar amount of Dodge Coronets were built in the same year. A big part of the A990 package was the inclusion of the 426 cubic inch Hemi engine, which was not yet available to the public. This engine had already proven its worth in 1964, and the improvements in 1965 included aluminum cylinder heads, a magnesium cross ram intake manifold, and this thing cranked out and advertised 425 horsepower. But we all know that they made a lot more horsepower than that, especially when they were blueprinted by famous engine builders and car guys of that generation. These things cranked out probably closer to 600 horsepower if we're being honest. So these things were very potent. They had a lot of potential outside of what the factory put together. And that's what made them so famous in super stock racing. You'll notice this car has a very plain appearance. It has steel wheels on it. You'll notice black steel wheels and slicks on the back 
but steel wheels, no hubcaps, a very plain color, very plain everything on these cars. The interior, pretty much as bare bones as you can get. Those little bitty seats came out of a van, very lightweight, very small. There's not a lot of accessories here, no back seat whatsoever, no radio, no heater, just a bare bones factory race car. This car does have some vintage racing belts in it, but you'll see that it doesn't have a wild paint job or crazy lettering or any kind of identification. This car is very much like it would have arrived at a racer's shop right before they went to the track. You can see they've put some slicks on it. It's got toe tabs on the front end, but the rest of this car is just like it would have left the factory. This car is part of the Steve Atwell collection. Now, Steve is a huge Mopar collector. He's got a lot of very significant Dodge and Plymouth cars in his collection. This is one of them. It's one of 101 built in this configuration. And these cars were highly, highly potent on the drag strip. And they stayed that way for many years. These cars, even after the super stock wars were over, these cars continued to be very competitive. You know, you'd see these cars with big tires under the back of them, but they'd still have that basic combination. This car really set the standard for Mopar drag racers from the 60s all beyond, you know, into the modern era of drag racing because these had just a bulletproof combination that really, really worked. Last but certainly not least is one of the most significant and valuable factory drag cars of all time, the 68 Hemi Dart. Now this car had a code name like most of these things, LO23 designated a Hemi engine in a Dodge Dart. Even though things were changing very quickly, Chrysler stayed with the 426 cubic inch Hemi as it was a bulletproof combination that proved to be very successful on the drag strip. Still had big compression, still had great heads, cross ram intake manifold, but they're no longer magnesium at this point. They've been transitioned into aluminum, two Holly four barrel carburetors. These things made tremendous horsepower. And by this point, the engine builders of the day had really figured this thing out and were cranking out even more horsepower than those original A990 Hemis from 65. These Hemi darts were available with two transmission options, a four-speed manual and a three-speed automatic. The four-speed was then equipped with a Dana 60 rear end with 488 gears. The automatic transmission cars had an eight and three-quarter rear end with 486 gears. Even though these cars were made by Dodge, they were actually put together by Hearst Performance in Madison Heights, Michigan. They did all the finish work to make these cars race ready. They replaced the steel fenders and hood with fiberglass components. The doors were acid dipped. They had different windows. They didn't actually have regulators in them. They just had a strap that you pulled up and fastened. And it got these cars down to about 3,000 pounds. Now, Plymouth had a similar combination in their Barracuda. These cars were based off of that same A-body platform. The darts and the Barracudas were very similar in performance and very similar in rarity. So only 80 of these cars were produced. This car is part of the McCandless collection from Burlington, North Carolina. Now, Herb McCandless is one of the most legendary Mopar drag racers of all time. Mr. Four Speed was his nickname, and he got that because he could really shift those gears. He was a race-winning driver, and he had really good equipment underneath him. And this Dart is a good example of that. Herb had an incredible season in this car in 1968. He raced 52 times with this car and won 36 of those races, placed second uh, plenty of other times as well. So this car was a contender everywhere he went, and he raced mostly in the Southern match race style races or the heads up classes that were really starting to come about. This is pre-pro stock, but it's very much a predecessor to that pro stock class because these super stock cars, especially these 68 darts, had some special modifications, including those radius wheel wells on the back, which allowed the use of 10 inch wide tires, which was kind of a new thing for super stock. And of course it's got Keystone wheels, the m &H tires on the back, those are real deal 1015s from back in the day. He ran this car for two seasons, 1968 and 1969, and won a bunch of races and won a bunch of money with it. I mean, he paid for this car with his earnings at the track, and that obviously catapulted him into some pretty big jobs. Now, previously, going all the way back to 65 and 6, he was running some pretty high dollar cars. He was factory backed. He partnered up with John Livingston on an altered wheelbase car. You know, he had some big opportunities, but his biggest opportunity came in 1970 when he took a job with Sox and Martin as a team driver, and he never looked back. Herb is definitely a Mopar racing legend, and this 68 Dart is one of the cars that got him there. 
One of the coolest parts about this car is the paint job. So it's got a really cool psychedelic stripe job on it, cool color combinations. I mean, this thing's got the perfect late 60s look. And that was actually done by Eddie Wilbanks in 1969. And when this car was restored in 2007 by Randy Hopkins, Eddie Wilbanks is the one who painted it again. So the original painter for the car painted it once again, and that just really ties the history of this thing all together. I hope you enjoyed walking through the factory drag car exhibit at the Savoy Automobile Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. This exhibit is now closed. They've actually moved these cars out and moved another group in, and they always keep something fresh in this museum. So you can go every few months and see a whole different picture. And in my case, I was able to see these factory drag cars right at the end, which was a very special weekend. They had a hoods up exhibit where you could actually see these engines because previously they were displayed with the hoods closed. So this was a really special time to be able to get down there, see these very significant factory drag cars and be able to take some videos and pictures to show you guys. And then of course on the back end, I did some research and dug up some old pictures. And of course the other two videos, I want you to check those out. We've got the Swiss cheese Pontiac from Arnie Beswick and we've got the New York Shaker Z11 Impala. I did in-depth history pieces on those two cars. I hope that you'll check out those videos. I'm putting a link to those right here. So click on that. Thank you for watching.